Hello, Battle 121 here. Welcome back, and we are Let's Playing Final Fantasy XII International. And I actually haven't recorded this game for nearly six months. Yeah, it's been a very, very long time since I've recorded this game. And uh, in this episode, we're going to be doing this fishing mini game. And this, yeah, this mini game might be kind of tough. I might really, really suck at it. What, you're not going to give me the fucking... Oh, okay, we got to talk to him again. Yeah, the font for the game actually might look a little bit different here. I am using an updated English patch. I don't know how much better it's supposed to be, but the font for uh, the text looks a little bit different here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be going for the Wu Shang badge eventually here. And there's like a whole bunch of uh, stuff we can get in this fishing mini game. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, you gotta do, like, button combinations, and, yeah, I'm probably gonna really suck at it here. Well, this earlier part shouldn't be that bad, but, basically, yeah, you don't want to screw up the button combinations. Wow, I, this is the first time I've actually attempted this minigame, and yay, we did it. Perfect score. I think we're supposed to get, like, a perfect score. And it gives us, like, items that we catch or something like that. Okay, common fish time six. And we get 100 gil. Okay, uh, I think we gotta do this, like, a number of times, and we get, like, different items for it. And, uh, yeah... Basically, uh, it'll start out downstream, it'll be like a level 1, then you go to the next level, and then, yeah, it's like, broken up into levels, basically. And eventually, we should be able to access, uh, the next level. We just gotta sit here and fish for like the longest time, I think. And yeah, this part right here probably isn't that hard. need a little bit of hand-eye coordination, I guess. Okay, what do we get, man? Okay, common fish, couple empty bottles. Okay, and we get a water stone? Why the hell would I want a water stone? Oh boy. Well, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing this until I get something I hopefully need to get. Hmm, looks like there's a note inside the bottle. You think it might be a treasure map? Ha, not likely. Go on, take it, it's yours. Okay, and we obtain a blue bottle. I'm thinking that's a clue for something that we might need or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna get a hundred gil. Yay! Okay, I'll just keep going with this then. Hmm, looks like there's a note inside the bottle. Treasure map, blah blah. And we get a green bottle. Ooh. And an empty bottle. Okay, and we get another water stone. Whoopity doo da. Alright, after doing that first uh, level there a bunch of times, we now have access to the midstream. Yeah, he doesn't really tell us, you know, when we're going to have access to this, but let's try midstream now. This is going to be a little bit harder. Yeah, the button combinations get harder as you progress through this minigame. Ah, that's probably going to screw me up right there. there oh, what? Oh, what, I hit the wrong one? See, that, that is freaking hard. Oh, what? Yeah, I did terrible there. I did absolutely fucking terrible. But yeah, basically the concept's the same for the, uh... Yeah, delicious fish, whatever. I, I stink. I'm going to show one more of these uh, on screen, and then I'll just 
do them off screen and show the items I get that are probably worth noting. But yeah, I, I'm probably going to really suck at this. Probably just takes a little practice. Okay, I got that one. Okay, doing better this time. Okay then. Yay, we got it. Did we get anything this time? Okay, common fish. Ooh, a note inside a bottle. Yay. Alright, and we get a red bottle. Very nice. And a couple more empty bottles. I don't know what those empty bottles do. I have no idea. Okay, water magicite. Big whoopity do. Hmm, looks like there's a note inside the bottle. Blah, blah, blah. Treasure. And we get a red bottle. Yay! Yeah, basically, uh, try to get a perfect score and you have a better chance of getting those bottles or whatever. Hmm, looks like there's a note inside a bottle. You think it might be a treasure map. Blah, blah, blah. And we get a yellow bottle. Yay! And something else. Okay, another water magicite if I care. Hmm, looks like there's another note inside a bottle, blah, 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 and we get a black bottle, yay, and two empty bottles, and something shining, and it's another crappy water magicite, yay. Alright, after you get enough perfect scores in this minigame, uh, you can fish upstream eventually, he'll tell you that, uh, oh, you're getting pretty good, and we're gonna go to a new area, so, uh, but first, we have some things to do, and I've heard that it's pretty much impossible to get the next uh, key item that we need without doing this. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of these bottles here. This bot, this small bottle contains a message: "Truth lies just beyond falsehood." Now, basically, what you want to do with all these letters here is you want to pick, uh, well, actually, not pick. Just to decipher this code, basically, you need to. Uh, Let's say the first letter there is C, you want to go to the next letter in the alphabet, which would be D. And then in case of, in the case of uh, Z, it would be A. So if you crack the code that way, it's Deadlands Boat. So basically we have to go to the Nebraeus Deadlands, and that's where we're going to be going next. Alright, where we actually find this boat, or Deadlands Boat or whatever, is... In the southeast corner here of the Nebraeus Deadlands in the Echoes of the Past area. And yeah, if we come over to this boat here, we can get a faint glow. And yeah, let's hold the bottle near to the light. And the blue bottle shatters. We get an X potion. And we obtain a wanly limbed message. Okay, whatever. Alright, next clue. Alright, yeah, hold on a second. Alright, next clue, next clue, uh, yeah, we have a green bottle here. Skip on stones to far bank shore by skipping stones, return once more. Okay, basically it's telling you that you gotta write down, uh, like every other letter or something like that. And if you write down, like if you skip the second S there, and skip the D, and then skip the N, and so on down the line, and then go back through it and spell out the words that, or the letters that you uh, skipped earlier. Then it should say uh, Silica Hut near Deadlands. So we're going to be heading to the Silica Wood next. Alright, we're here in the Salica Wood, or Silica Wood, or whatever you want to call it. We're in the Piebald Path, which is the area right before the Nebraeus Deadlands. And at this particular hut right here, there's a faint glow. And yes, let's hold the bottle closer and we get a Hestagamote and another clue, a green hued message, okay. Alright, for the next, uh, for the next one here, yeah, we have a red bottle. This small bottle contains a message, foothills rise in mountains shallow. Okay, basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, um, to separate the capital letters from 
the lowercase letters and then it's a simple word scramble and it comes out to quiet shrine and if you remember all the shrines early in the must foreign high waste when we were uh, about to fight chaos that's where we need to go next all right here we are in the moss fern high waste in the babbling veil vale area and in the northwest shrine we should see a faint glow by this quiet shrine yes let's hold the bottle near the lights and we get a holy moat with a vermilion message okay all right on to the next one all right let's check out the next clue here this one's actually not too hard but it's kind of annoying actually all right, this is the yellow bottle. This small bottle contains a message. Dragon stir among the eaters of the wind. As you can see there, you have <clears throat> numbers 1 through 10. Well, some of the numbers are actually, uh, well, grayed out or blanked out. Uh, basically, what you have to do is there are 10 windmills in uh, the Sorobi Step, and the numbers that are, are listed there are the windmills that need to be on. The ones that aren't listed need to be turned off. And that's how you figure out this puzzle to get uh, the yellow bottle or whatever message we're supposed to get. So I'm going to go ahead and head to the Sorobi Step now. All right, we're here on the Sorobi Step. And as you can see, uh, this is windmill number one right here. Every time you see like an indentation of a windmill on the map here, that's where a windmill is. And they're scattered all throughout the Sorobi Step. So basically all you have to do is just turn on the ones that should be on according to the clue. And if the, if the one that's on is not supposed to be on, turn it off. And that's all you really have to do for this. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk to this Moogle thingamabob. It looks like this one's on. Yeah, we don't want to stop the windmill for this one. You actually want to keep this one running. So yeah, that's basically all it is for this. Alright, this is the last windmill I believe I have to change. Luckily I've gone through and I haven't had to change a whole bunch of them. But yeah, this one we need to start up here. And that should unlock something for us. Yay, all started. Without warning, the yellow bottle in your inventory shatters. We get a high ether. And we obtain a Uric message. Okay then. Alright, we're here in the uh, Garam Scythe waterway. And the next clue is... In a black bottle. Easy as ABC, so count yourself lucky. Basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take these uh, these number codes here and match them up with the numbers in the, in the alphabet. Uh, for example, the first letter in the alphabet is A, so the number one will translate into A. And, and once you decode all that stuff, um, it, it should say uh, Sluice Gate Rats. So there should be some rats around here somewhere, huh? That we're supposed to find somewhere. All right, quit casting bubble spells on, my, on the characters. It doesn't matter right now. There should be a faint glow on one of these rats around here somewhere. Yes. And the shit and the bottle shatters. We get an elixir, very nice, and we get an onx message. Now, basically these messages here will translate into uh, river, forest, fire, ash, darkness. I don't know how you're supposed to decode Barheim Passage out of that, but that's where we're supposed to go next, the Barheim Passage, so I'll meet you there. All right, we're here in the Barheim Passage in the West Annex area, and directly ahead of us is the Sevia Spawn, or that little room in the Sevia Spawn that we're supposed to go to. And there's something around here or like a cutscene or something like that going on, or there's gonna be a cutscene going on here. Mwahahaha! <laughs> and yes, we get to see Gilgamesh again. And yeah, you can't actually complete this part of the side quest until you've defeated Gilgamesh, uh, or done Gilgamesh's hunt. Battle on the big bridge hunt, so... Make sure you do that hunt before you try to finish this uh, side quest, or else Gilgamesh won't show up here. Okay, and he gets us a Matamune, which I think is the uh, upgraded fishing rod. 
So yeah, Gilgamesh is nice enough to give us a fishing rod. What a nice guy, huh? Yeah, cursed fishing rod that drinks the lifeblood of the fish it hooks. You obtained it from Gilgamesh, ancient man of mystery. Okay then. Alright, we're back in the South Bank village in the Tomaska Esther Sand, and before we talk to Rooksell and continue fishing, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode, and we're going to continue on with the fishing side quest. This is Vital121. See you next time.